In this video, I'll talk about the ratio test and the integral test when determining whether or not an infinite series converges. We're asked to determine whether or not the following series converge. And the first one is the sum of 4 to the n over n minus 1 factorial. The ratio test works like this. We have uh, 4 to the n and, and n minus 1 factorial. What we want to see is, we want to see if the limit as n goes to infinity, the limit of a, that the term, n plus 1 term, over the nth term, if that is less than 1, I should put an if statement here, if this limit of this ratio of one term divided by its previous term, if that ratio is less than 1, then we say it converges. And you've guessed it. If it's greater than 1, it diverges. And if it equals 1, then we say, well, we just have to use a different test. The, the ratio test doesn't, doesn't give us enough information if this ratio does equal 1. Okay, so let's look at, at what we have here. We have when n is n plus 1. So a to the n plus 1. That equals 4 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 and then minus 1 because that's what we have here. So I'm plugging in n plus 1 here and then minus 1 factorial. And we have in the blue corner a sub n equals 4 to the n over n minus 1 quantity factorial. Now I'm going to just make it easy on myself and just put a fraction bar in between those two and we're looking at this ratio. Well this equals, if we were to simplify this, uh, 4 to the n plus 1 divided by 4 to the n, right, let's just look at those parts. 4 to the n plus 1 divided by 4 to the n. Well we have 4 to the n cancels out, and what we're left with is just 4 to the first power. So that's 4. Over in the denominator corner, we have uh, n plus 1 minus 1. That's just n factorial. So I'll write this n factorial and up here this part, because when you uh, multiply or divide by fractions, you multiply by, th by the exponent. So this part is going to go up here. n minus 1 factorial is what I just did. Just put that in the numerator. Then what do we have here? Well, n minus 1 factorial and n factorial. So you can think of it like uh, this simplifies to just n. If we were to to simplify this, this would just be n. So what we have is 4 over n. So now we take the limit. So we've simplified this part and then we just get 4 over n. So now we take the limit of that. So the limit as n approaches infinity of 4 over n, well that equals 0 because the denominator just grows and grows and that is certainly less than 1. So therefore this infinite series converges. This infinite series converges. Moving on to the next example. We have the sum of 3 over n times the natural log of n. And for this test, we're going to run through the integral test for this series. And the integral test um, is actually, it, it's, it's more complicated in terms of calculus, but maybe less complicated in terms of just uh, algebra that we had here, just to simplify this. So here's what the integral test is. We say if we just take the integral of whatever number we have here, 2 is what we're beginning here, n equals 2, up to infinity. I shouldn't say up to, but because infinity is not a number, but 2 to infinity of this, of this 
formula. And so 3 over, and I'm going to replace n with x. So x over natural log of x dx. Now, if, if this integral uh, converges, we just say if this converges, then so does the sum. And if it diverges, then then so does the sum. And, and it's really uh, that straightforward. Now, uh, the, the, uh, the problem with this, you'd say, hey, why don't we just do this all the time? Well, sometimes the integrals can be tough, like this one. What about the integral of a factorial? A little bit more difficult. But let's do the integral of this one. And it, it will turn out to be an improper integral. So it's it's this one. And just to save some space, I'll just say we are doing this. And I'm going to jump ahead and and just write write the answer here. This is the limit as a approaches infinity. This is an improper integral. So we say that the limit as a approaches infinity of, now what we have is uh, if we evaluate this integral, the antiderivative of this is just, uh, not just, it takes a little work, but it's a u substitution. It's not real tough. So 3 times the natural log of the natural log of x. Now, the limit of that evaluated from 2, again, from 2 to a, because we can't just plug in infinity here. We're just taking the limit as a approaches infinity. That's that's how we deal with these improper integrals. Improper meaning we have an infinity sign uh, somewhere on one of the boundaries. Okay, this then becomes the limit as a approaches infinity of 3 times the natural log of the natural log of a minus 3 times the natural log of the natural log of 2. And what do we have here? Well, when you plug in infinity, I know we're not going to just plug it in, but you think about a growing without bound. This term right here just grows and grows. It doesn't grow super fast, but it grows and grows and grows. And so therefore, this stuff becomes insignificant, really. Uh, but this just keeps on growing and growing and growing. And so therefore, this limit then uh, you could say it does not exist, or you could say it just is, I won't say equals infinity, but is it is infinite. So, therefore, this diverges. And as I said above, if if this converges, then so does the sum. But if it diverges, then so does the sum. So, this infinite sum diverges.